Yo, my name is John, and today I am editing your concert photos because all the concerts have been canceled and I've already edited all of mine. <laughs> So welcome back to yet another episode in this Edit Your Photos series. And I am kidding, I have never done one of these before and I honestly have no idea how it's gonna turn out. <laughs> Recently on Twitter I asked you to send me raw photos from your content photography so I could edit them in a video like this. And while I am a professional, keep in mind I am not perfect, believe it or not. <laughs> The edits that I'm gonna make in this video are strictly just my own takes on your photography. I'm in no way, shape, or form trying to say that I am making the photography better. I'm not saying that I'm editing it the right way as opposed to the wrong way or anything like that. I'm just doing my own version on it. So yeah, just putting that out there right up front. Now one more thing before we begin, I'd like to point out that this is not gonna be a tutorial video. I'm not gonna be able to go into all the little nuances and details of the different sliders and masks and buttons and things like that. I just don't have enough time for that. There's definitely a lot of photos that I'd like to get to, so in order to do that, I'm going to be focusing more on the why I chose to edit a certain way as opposed to how I made the edit that way. Okay, with that being said, just sit back, relax, and hit that like button before you forget, because I know you will. <laughs> also, hit subscribe if, if, you're, if you're already down there. Okay, so for this first photo, we have a submission from Amanda Lafierriere. Uh, La Fierriere. La Fierriere? I'm sorry. <laughs> Amanda says, hey. Hi, shot on a Canon 6D with a Tokina 24-70 f2.8. I'm excited to see what you do with them. Amanda. So we have this shot of this artist singing on stage, and immediately, as soon as I see this shot, I know pretty much exactly what I want to do with it. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust all the different exposure levels and get a nice clean image over here, make it a little bit more contrasty. There's a lot of energy going on in this person's pose. I really wanted to crop in and focus right on them and cutting out all of this empty negative space that's around them. And using all of the different crop tools and the different transform tools in Lightroom, I was able to get a nice composed shot where the artist is right there in the center, in the middle. And I did change it into a portrait orientation because I just like that more and because of Instagram. <laughs> now there's not a whole lot of color going on in this photo to begin with, so I decided to go with a black and white edit. Now after adjusting the exposure levels on this photo and then framing it the way that I'd like it to be in Lightroom, I'm gonna now transfer it over to Photoshop where I'll do a little extra touch-ups in order to um, delete the background, so to speak. <laughs> AKA erasing everything around them and isolating the subject in the middle of nothingness. Now using a combination of the clone stamp tool and the brush tool, I'm just gonna go through and just get rid of all of these uh, little details in the background here. Now this is kind of a trendy editing style in general. Uh, you've probably seen images like this before, but there is just something about these kinds of shots that I really do like, where it's just very simple, it's very minimalistic, and yeah, I mean, there's a reason why this kind of edit is very popular. It looks good, it looks cool, and overall it gives you a strong image at the very end of the edit. And honestly, I love these shots. If anyone's interested in a tutorial on how to make an edit like this, just let me know in the comments and uh, I'll see, I'll see, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> And boom, it's done, it's simple, it's clean, it's minimalistic. I kind of wish I got rid of that microphone at the bottom there, I didn't notice that was there until just right now, but it's okay, we're gonna get over it. Um, but anyway, hey Amanda, thank you so much for submitting this image, I really, really appreciate it, and I hope you enjoyed what I did with it. Okay, all right, next one. Okay, this next submission is from Yising Cow. I'm just kidding, I know it's Aishing. Unless it's not actually pronounced Aiching, and I'm so sorry, I keep messing this up. <laughs> Aiching says, Hi John, I saw your tweet about looking for photos to edit for your video. Here's my raw of Julia Michaels. Camera was the Canon EOS R. Hey, that's the camera that I use. Um, with a 24-70 uh, lens. Thanks. Aishing. Okay, so right off the bat, the first thing I notice about this is the wonderful exposure and the really, really, really vibrant colors. It's already, I already know this is gonna be a good edit. So I'm a big fan of doing these like two-tone-ish edits. Basically what that means is that I take two very strong colors in an image and then I really focus on those. Now I love the way that the blue light in the background is complementing her red dress right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust these colors to where even those purples and those reds are a little bit more blue to get that kind of like two-tone sort of uh, sort of vibe and I'm gonna do that by making adjustments in the HSL panel and tweaking the different sliders in the calibration panel 
Okay, so now that I've got these colors a little bit more to my liking, I'm gonna go ahead and make some more adjustments to the exposure levels. I'm gonna go in and make sure that the photo's nice and sharp by opening up the detail panel. And actually, one other thing that I wanna do is uh, get rid of those red lights in the background. So in the background here, you see some red lights that are coming down from the ceiling. And I wanna adjust those so that they're actually blue lights instead of red. And in order to do that, I'm gonna create two different color masks and I'm gonna put them on there and I'm gonna try and get rid of those lights. Now, of course, this is just a preference thing. This is just something that I just decided that I wanted to do because uh, if I were to make them a little bit more blue or a little bit more desaturated, then those lights end up blending in with the background and your eyes won't be drawn to them the way that they currently are right now, or at least the way that my eyes currently are drawn to them. <laughs> And then after we get that nice and situated, I'm gonna go ahead and recompose this. I'm gonna reframe it a little bit. I'm a sucker for a good portrait-oriented image. Thanks again, Instagram. Um, also, not to mention the distracting faces that are going on in the background. Let's just get let's just let's just get rid of that. We're gonna focus on Julia here. And the last thing that I want to do, because we were shooting from what could be a slightly unflattering angle, whenever you're kind of low on the ground and they're up on the stage, you're shooting from like underneath and whatnot. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the transform panel and I'm going to artificially change the perspective. Not exactly sure what this is right here, but you get what I'm saying. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna adjust the vertical slider right here. So it looks like we were a little bit more eye level with Julia whenever we were photographing her. It's not a whole lot, but a little bit goes a long way. So we're gonna bump that just a tiny little bit and um, I think that's it. Here you can see the before, very, very good shot as is. Right out of the camera, already great work and then on the right you see the edit that I made to it ready to post to Instagram ready for all those likes and all those comments and things like that but hey Aishing thank you so much for the submission I really really appreciate it um, everyone go and check out Aishing on Instagram they're doing a lot in the music photography scene right now so uh, go and uh, check it out and you know support each other awesome okay now let's go on hey John Hi, uh, here are some photos I've taken at some shows with my point and shoot. Uh, the Canon G7X Mark II from Alyssa, smiley. Um, I'm not exactly sure who this artist is here, but what I am sure about is that I love these colors that we are already getting right off the bat, right out of camera. Um, I'm loving the blue and the yellow contrast that's going on right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust all the different exposure levels. I'm going to play around with that white balance. And then um, what I really am going to be focused on here is really making it nice and contrasty. You can see I'm in the tone curve tool right here, getting a nice, Nice, crispy, crunchy, contrasty uh, image right here. <laughs> And now the real magic is gonna happen in the HSL panel over here. You might be able to tell that I'm just swinging these sliders all the way to the left and all the way to the right. And honestly, a lot of times when I'm editing, that's just basically how you have to do it. <laughs> just start going things and start pulling them and start pushing them in very dramatic different directions. And sometimes you get something that ends up being really cool. Sometimes you don't. But in this case, we have something that's really, really, really cool, which is this two-tone colored image right here. I mean, even that pink and green combo, that purple and green combo, a lot of these color combos I'm really, really liking. After going into the calibration tools and really, really punching in that saturation and just trying to see exactly how far I can take this JPEG image and make it still look very, very usable. Um, oh, see, that's really good too. See, I really like, uh, see, now I'm torn. <laughs> this happens a lot, actually, where I can like, okay, I kind of like this version of the edit, but I also like that version of the edit. But uh, I'm gonna keep playing around with this. I'm gonna stick to the original idea, which is gonna be that blue and that green right there. And once I get it to a nice spot, you already know that I have to go and make this into a portrait-oriented photo. <laughs> I'm gonna go in, make it five by seven, AKA the Instagram ratio. And then I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna adjust the framing to my liking and um, I'm gonna probably toggle back and forth between those two edits and see which one I like the most but uh, yeah here we go okay so here you go you have the original right there on the left and then you have my edit uh, on the right or maybe this edit or or you know what no no let's go with the original one yeah I like the I like the original one more but this one's also really good too Unless this hap this happens a lot, actually. <laughs> Let me know in the comments which one you liked more. But either way, Alyssa, great shot. Thank you so much for sending it. I hope you enjoy what I did with the photo. And uh, yeah, let's keep going. Okay, so this next photo that we have here is from... 
Annie. <laughs> That's literally all it says. I have no I have no information about this photo <laughs> or anything like that. Um, it looks like Annie here submitted a uh, what I'm going to assume is a phone photo. And the reason why I'm assuming that is because a it's right there in the pit. You can see that they're standing in general admission behind a bunch of different people. So I assume it's from a photo that you took while attending the concert. Also, it is a JPEG image and also also I can just I can just tell that it's a phone photo. But that doesn't mean that it's bad. In fact, I was actually surprised by this photo whenever I saw it because even though I did kindly request that you did not submit phone photos, <laughs> I think some of y'all may know how that ended up going. <laughs> I did pick this one out of the bunch because I do see a lot of potential with this one and I want to show you all exactly how far you can push a good photo no matter what camera it came from. Let me show you. So obviously we're not going to have the most amount of detail to work with with this image. However, because it is a phone photo and because it already is very naturally contrasted, I'm really going to boost up that contrast and that clarity. Um, if this were like if this were like a portrait photo, this might not work as much, but because there's so much detail and there's so much energy and excitement going on um, I think we can get away with really cranking up that uh, that clarity slider in addition to that we're gonna dehaze it and we're gonna really really boost up that saturation after adjusting some more levels in the tone curve I'm gonna go back to that HSL panel and I'm gonna really try and make this a little bit more uniformed you can see that there's a lot of yellow and green going on those are the lights that were used at the show what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust that green to make it more of a yellow so that the whole image has a little bit more of a uniformed look and make it all black and yellow there's one more step that I want to do in order to make this photo from good to my opinion great. And that's going to be in the transform module. So by using this transform tool, I'm going to try and level out all of these video screens on the back of the stage. And I'm going to try and make it as parallel with the camera as possible. So I'm going to adjust the, the vertical space. I'm going to adjust the rotation and I'm going to adjust the horizontal slider over here. I'm basically going to keep playing around with this image until it makes it look like the photo was taken straight on instead of it being from like a crowd perspective. And after making some tweaks here and there and getting it to where the photo feels just right, I'd say that we're good. I'd say that we're done. Honestly, at a glance, if I saw this without going into all the details of it or whatnot, I'd say this is a pretty exceptional image, especially coming from a phone. Annie, uh, thank you so much for submitting this. I think this is great. I hope you enjoy the edit and I hope everyone else enjoys the edit as well. Here's the before and the after. Okay, now the last shot that we're going to do today is from photographer Matt Flood. Matt shot this with a Sony a7 III with a Sigma 35mm f1.4. Uh, Matt says, hope you get to check these out. Well, here I am, I have checked them out and I really want to work on this photo because as soon as I saw this photo, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. Okay, similar to Amanda's photo at the beginning of this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this black and white and I'm going to adjust the perspective of the photo by using the transform tools again and I'm gonna really, really focus in on the singer laying down on the ground right here. And by the way, this shot is already awesome. I would have been proud to get a shot from this angle, from this perspective, this top-down bird's eye view especially in a moment like this. So what I really want to do is I want to crop in and get nice and tight on the performer right here. And I'm going to, of course, make it into a vertical orientation. That's yeah. And uh, once I get the framing just right, then I'm really gonna go for like a very grungy look here. You can see by all the grittiness of the stage and all the different cords and cables and all the different gaff tape and all of that stuff, it's already a very grungy image. So I'm gonna really boost, boost up that clarity and I'm gonna really bump up that contrast and I really want this to feel like a very intense, very, very punchy photo. I'm gonna bring up the blacks. I'm gonna really, really make it a little bit more faded, almost to like a quote, film-esque sort of vibe. I'm gonna adjust that contrast a little bit more and I'm gonna go into the detail panel and I'm gonna raise that sharpness a bit. And then I'm gonna go into the black and white panel. You may have noticed that earlier this was originally the HSL panel, but whenever you're editing a photo that's black and white, it changes to the black and white panel. Um, even though you can't see all the different color values that are in the image because it's black and white, those color values are still technically there. 
So you still want to come into this panel and adjust all the different colors uh, to your liking. Now again, I'm just swinging these sliders back and forth just to get a good idea of how they affect the image. Once I get a good balanced look right over here, then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a mask and I'm going to uh, make a circular mask over, uh, over their jeans. The jeans are a little blown out. I think I'm going to bring down the highlights just a little bit to bring the details back there, make it a little little bit more even and um and uh, actually the last last thing I'm gonna do is get rid of this foot <laughs> I don't know whose foot that was but I want it out of this shot sorry Matt if that's your foot the foot's gotta go the foot's gone <laughs> So right here you can see the before on the left, this is the photo that Matt submitted, and on the right you have my take, my interpretation on it. I'm really interested to see how Matt would have edited this photo. Um, if Matt ever did edit this, I'd like to see what it looked like because I'm, I, I wonder how different your take would have been from mine. But either way, Matt, thank you so much for the submission. I hope you enjoyed what I did with the photo, and yeah, keep it up because this is great work. And with that concludes this video. For everyone else that submitted, thank you so much for submitting. I think I actually got like almost like 200 different submissions. So uh, I definitely couldn't get to all of them, but if you like this video, please hit like below. Let me know what you thought in the comments. And if I should do these more often, then, uh, then I'll do them more often. <laughs> so if you submitted a photo that I didn't get to this time around, make sure to subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter and on Instagram where I will announce when I'm gonna take more photos photos for more videos like this and just to keep up to date with all of my other things. Follow me on Twitch, I stream every single week anything from video games to just chats and just hanging out and just doing stuff like that. Who knows, the possibilities are endless. Thanks again everyone for watching, I appreciate you being here and um, yeah, stay safe out there. <laughs> I think you know what I'm talking about. Okay, and with that I will see you all in the next one. Bye.